Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Canon Tilt Shift 90mm f2.8 macro lens. Brand new lens by Canon. Uh, I tell you, I am so glad that Canon has manufactured a few new tilt shift lenses. Um, I'm a primarily, as a photographer goes, I shoot product, um, some food, some architecture, and I really am happy that they came out with this focal length of lens. I've been wanting uh, a 90 lens to, to play with. Specifically, I've been wanting to test this lens to see its swing and tilt features, as well as its macro capabilities. This particular lens has a minimum focusing distance of 15.4 inches, so you can get pretty close. Um, that is at a one to two scale, so it's not a true one to one macro, but it's one to two, which is still very close, at a 0.5x magnification. Now you could put a, a 2x teleconverter on this and get one to one, and it would convert this to a 180 millimeter lens, but it would also take you down two f-stops uh, in light transmission. So you'd be looking at an f5.6 lens with any kind of tele-extender on it. I don't know, I like having the f2.8. So we got f2.8 all the way down to f45 on this lens. It's still pretty darn shallow at f8. Um, it's probably not a lens I would necessarily use with landscapes. Um, I have not had this lens long enough to really take it out into any significant landscapes and spend some time with it. I would need some landscapes that are of a great expanse because of the focal length. 90 millimeters isn't usually what I think of when I think of uh, landscape photography. Uh, nor would it be useful to me for any kind of interior architecture just because of its focal length. However, I think if I was photographing, say, skyscrapers from one building to another building and it was pretty far away, this potentially could be a useful tool to have in my bag. But I would say it's more of a product food photographer's type of lens, the ability to have some swings and tilts, some shifts in there. The things I love about this lens, it's beautifully machined. It's gorgeous. It's got a silky smooth focusing barrel, fully manual focus, no image stabilization or autofocus here. It's got a large tilt swing knob, which is really nice. And it's got this wonderful ability to rotate on, on the camera as well so that I can send my plane of focus diagonally through the scene if I'd like. Beautiful glass. You know, you can look up all the tech spe specifications on other reviews. I'm not gonna get into all that here. I really wanted to test this lens in a number of different practical situations of the kind of photography that I do. So I've tested this lens in five different scenarios. The first scenario, I had a, a local product and it was a food product along with a styled cocktail next to it on two different planes of focus. And I wanted to get in what the one shot, both items sharp. The second one that I did was just a, a straight up sort of food shot, just a you know plated uh, breakfast item with some coffee with it and also on two different planes of focus. And I wanted to be able to pull focus on two different areas. The third shot was a real tight shot of this like small little mini cupcake. And at that point I was just really wanting to test the macro capabilities of the lens to see how close I could get and what sorts of movements I could get out of the lens once I was there. Fourth scenario I set up was a straight product shot of a three-dimensional object on a white background, your typical sort of uh, silhouette or drop and pop on white type shot. Finally, the fifth scenario I set up was a natural light portrait. I just wanted to see, taking this thing out, how well it would do as a 90 millimeter portrait lens and maybe play around with some uh, swinging just for or creative kicks. So in the first shot, I set up my product on tabletop, got it lit up, uh, began to get into styling the cocktail. Was this like eggnog and vodka uh, beverage? It's pretty tasty. And you know, part of the challenge is that I've got the product slightly behind the cocktail, the prop, the propped portion of the, the shot. And I wanted to get my focus to land on the whipped cream, and I also wanted the focus to land on the label and so that I could get the the company's label sharp as well as the whipped cream. That's essentially what was happening is my plane of focus was looking straight down straight at this product and I needed to be able to rotate it and tilt towards that back label of the bottle which this lens was allowing me to do nicely. The second scenario that I set up was just a simple scone on a plate and a cup of coffee with some uh, some latte like foam in it and I wanted to be able to get the chocolate and the scone nice and sharp, but also pull focus in on just the bubbles of the, of the coffee. And again, being able to rotate the lens slightly and then, and then be able to tilt in onto the coffee bubbles was allowing me to pull in focus on that area. 
For the third shot, I was just playing around at that point and uh, wanted to just kind of come in real close, about a foot away, a little bit further than a foot away with this lens and get in as close as I could with this lens and get a little bit more of that macro look and play around with this cupcake and see, you know, with different levels of swinging and tilting, what portions of the cupcake I could get pulled into focus. For my fourth shot, I went and set up a pretty typical product on white sort of setup and lit it up. And in this typical kind of scenario, a client's gonna wanna see the front of the package and they've spent some money on the, having this package designed, they're gonna wanna see the side of the package. And they'll also wanna see the depth of it, so they'll wanna see the top of the package. And when you do this with any other typical kind of lens, a couple things happen as you look as you begin to look down onto the product, it creates a keystoning effect to the item. So it doesn't look like it's sitting straight up and down. The other thing that happens is even at a very small aperture, you can't get the whole thing from front corner to back corner sharp. Uh, whereas with a lens like this, it gives you the ability to do a couple of things. You can look straight at the product. And in this case, the product ends up being too low in frame, but then I'm able to shift down like so with this lens, allowing me to look straight down at the product and see the top of the product at the same time as looking down at it, keeping it looking like it's straight up and down, it's standing straight up and down. Additionally, I'm able to then, once I'm in that position, I can then swing the barrel of the lens, like so, to match this plane of focus with the front of the box, which then allows me to pull focus through the product from corner to corner, getting it nice and sharp. So those were the main reasons I wanted to test the lens. And then I had some fun and I took the director's assistant, Quinn, outside and we just did some uh, natural light portraits. Outside, I just wanted to see how this lens would perform at f2.8, manual focus. Now, 90 millimeters is a beautiful focal length for portraiture. This is a pretty heavy lens, and I would say that if I was going to take, you know, any, do, be serious about portrait work, I would probably go with one of their autofocus lenses, the 135 or the 50 or the 85, um, even the 70 to 200 f2.8. Beautiful lenses. And they all have, you know, image stabilization features and autofocus, whereas this does not have autofocus or image stabilization. I not only you know, shot Quinn there at f2.8 so that I could see at the shallowest depth of field what that portrait would look like of her, uh, but I also wanted to see just playing around, swinging to the extremes to the left and extreme to the right uh, to, to just kind of play around with some of the creative potential of the lens. So all in all, this is an incredible lens to have in your kit, uh, particularly if you're a product or tabletop or still life or food photographer. Um, I think it could be useful if you are an architectural photographer and were commissioned to do some exteriors and those exteriors happen to be pretty far away. This would be a handy lens for that. But otherwise, it would come up sort of infrequently compared to the use that a product photographer would put this under. I would probably be using this lens primarily for most of the work that I do. And so I'm super happy that Canon has finally released some new Tilt Shift L-series lenses. Thank you, Canon, for doing that. So great. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down. Feel free to comment down below. We'll get back to you. Feel free to subscribe up there or down there. Thanks for watching.